We always knew BDO had AP caps, but we never really knew to what extent they affected our gameplay. But now we have all of that information. And in this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know about AP caps, how you can utilize that knowledge to greatly increase your DPS, and what are my three top offhands that I use for grinding. Until recently, I used to always obsess about pushing my AP up, and I used to think, hey, once I get about 301, 305 AP, I'd be there. But it turns out my thinking was completely wrong, and we just didn't know this information before. It turns out that I was already at AP cap, and anything else that I pushed past, it was very diminished. And in order to push my DPS and my silver per hour, I had to utilize the other stats in the game that I always neglected. For the explanation about AP caps, we're going to be utilizing Garmot.com since it's one of the best BDO sites out there and it's really accessible. Go to Tools and go to the Monster AP Cap tab. Now at first glance, you might not understand what's going on here, but we're going to break it down step by step and you'll know everything you need to know after I'm done. Now in order to understand that table, you need to first know what your stats are. So in order to find out what your AP is, press I, go to My Stats. And here you'll find that information. If you're the succession player, you'll look at the first line. If you're an awakening player, you'll look at the second line and you combine those with the extra monster AP down below. We'll talk about the species damage and additional damage after. So as you can see here, my base succession AP is 571 and I add it to the extra monster AP that's 210. So in total, I have 781. Now this is affected by all of the buffs, all of the consumables, your add-ons, and everything. So as you see, while you're grinding, this would actually be a bit higher based on your tier 2 and tier 3 monster AP add-on. So you have to take that into consideration as well. Now species damage is a bit different. So these three lines down below, they're a bit different in the sense that they're not affected by the AP caps that we'll be talking about. Instead, they'll always be effective at 0.85. So that means if you have 100 species damage, that is effectively 85 AP. Now you might be thinking, hey, why am I losing numbers there? Why is it effective one to one? Is that bad? Well, not necessarily. In some spots, the AP caps are set in such a manner that there is diminishing return. So once you hit like a 70% cap, then species damage starts being better, as we'll see in the table explanation that's coming up next. So now let's go column by column. So starting at the left over here, this is just the icons and the images for the trash loot. And then right next to it, you have the mob type. So this comes into play when you're trying to identify what kind of species of mobs are there at that grind spot. Then you have the name of the grind spot, and then you have the initial 5%. What the initial 5% really means is that if your AP falls between this range provided here, then your AP is only effective at 5%. That means if you had 400 AP, it's only effective as if you had 20 AP. But the moment it crosses this upper range and it's above this, then it will be effective at 100% rate as we'll see next. Next we have the 100% column. If your AP falls within this range, your AP will be fully effective. Next up is the soft cap column. So what these are is after you reach this range, the upper limit, and anything after this number, your AP will be nerfed based on which soft cap is in play at which spot. So for different spots, the soft caps will be different. For example, in the Serendia Elvia, there's no 70% or 60% soft caps, but there is a 5% soft cap. Whereas for other spots, it might be different. So thanks to this information, we can change up our build and effectively do more DPS if you're reaching the 100% limit and about to go over and be affected by a soft cap. Now let's quickly take an example. Let's say you're grinding at Sakrya lower and you have 100 more AP than the upper limit of the 100% column. So let's say you have 590 AP. But due to the 70% soft cap, that 100 AP extra is only going to be 70% effective. That means instead of hitting the mobs like you had 590 AP, you're going to be hitting it like you had 560. Now, this is a lot more severe in other spots. For example, at Orc Camp, after you pass 856, everything else is greatly diminished. It's only 5% effective. So let's say you're a Giga Chad with super high AP. Instead of having 956 AP, you would possibly only be hitting like you had 861. What's the difference between 861 and 856? Very negligible. So because of that, it's really important to understand how this AP caps work. And lastly, you have the hard cap. Very few spots actually implement a hard cap. So 
I believe we have here over here with Fadus. There's a hard cap there. And I think that's all that shows up here. So that's not something we really need to worry about. And all we're really going to be focusing on is the soft caps. Now that we have all of the knowledge here based on soft caps and such, let's talk about how you can push past it and do more DPS. First, let's talk about species damage. Let's take Orc Camp as an example. Let's say you have the option between 50 more monster AP and 50 demi human AP. Due to the soft cap being 5%, any AP point above 856 is going to be cut down to 5% effectiveness. That means if you added 50 AP, that's actually working as if it was only 2.5 AP. Whereas if you added demi human AP, species damage is 85% effective across the board. So 50 demi human AP acts like it's 42.5 regular AP, greatly exceeding the effectiveness of the 50 monster AP. We'll talk about the sources of all these additional stats after the explanation here, but there is one more thing that you need to consider. Other than species damage, you could also increase your DPS output by increasing your crit hit damage or special attack damage. Now on the topic of pushing past that soft cap and doing more DPS, let's first talk about drafts. That's the easiest way any of you can utilize this knowledge because you don't need to go buy new gear in order to do that. You don't need new crystals or anything. So let's take these for example. First you have the beast draft. This is only pure monster AP. You're only going to use this when you need survivability at a spot. Then you have Frenzy Draft. Now Frenzy Draft gives you a lot of monster AP and crit hit damage. That's really good. But if you're at the AP soft cap, then you, this starts being much less effective. So let's move on. You have Giant's Draft. Giant's Draft gives you a little bit of AP, but it gives you special attack damage. That is huge. And it gives you some stamina. So special attack damage is going to modify all of those additional attacks. Uh, whether back attack, down attack, crit hits, all of those. And lastly, you have Elixir of Indignation. Against mobs which are human type, this is so clutch because you have extra damage to humans, which is not affected by soft cap and is at 85% effectiveness at all times. And you get 12% special attack damage. That's huge. Although you do lose out on survivability, so be careful with that. Now let's talk offhands. This is the moment a lot of you have been waiting for, so here it is. If you guys seen me stream, you'll see that I have three separate offhands I switch between. So let's go over them. The first one is the tried and tested Kudum. This is the one with the highest monster AP. The next one is the one I recommend all of you to get because it doesn't cost you any money. All it costs is 50 CP and you can rent it after you finish the Valencia 1 questline. That is the Nether offhand. So this is special because it has 10% crit hit damage and it has the stats just a little bit worse than a Tet Kudum. So you still get a lot of monster AP bonus, but you also get the added bonus of 10% crit hit damage, which is pretty nice. So in order to rent it, you want to go to Valencia after you finish the Valencia 1 quest line and you can talk to Shahazad Nezer. For those older players who are dreading doing Valencia 1, it actually took me just an hour. It seems like they streamlined it compared to the old days and it wasn't a pain at all. <laughs> and lastly is the offhand that has gained the most popularity as of recent is just a green offhand. In the case of Berserker and Dark Knights, you have the Oros Ornamental Knot. So once you get a green offhand, at any level, you can use a reform stone in order to turn it into an ultimate variant, which gives you 10% extra special attack damage. Now remember guys, quick note, you want to get the green offhand, which has high AP. Every class should have one, and that will get you to the AP caps, as well as provide the additional bonus. For your information, what those reform stone look like is right here. Ultimate reform stone. Once upon a time, we used to have a full set of green gear on us and we would turn it all into ultimate variant. And these reform stones used to be clutch. We never really used it after we passed on from that stage of the game until recently where we learned about all these AP caps and stuff. So for example, if I use this Oro's Knot and I look at my AP stat, and if this a combination of the AP plus the monster AP plus all my buffs exceeds the AP cap, then it really comes in clutch because that 10% special attack damage is a huge modifier versus having more AP. You might see a lot of streamers using this and grinding at breakneck speeds. Well, you can do it too. It's not very expensive. For example, the Oro's not. So due to popularity after this information has 
became public. Um, you'll see a bit less of these on the market, but they're not difficult to get. And once you get one, it's really easy to enhance. For example, getting it to Tet, going from Tri to Tet only takes like 27 crown stones or something like that, very little. And then going from Tet to Pen takes 69 crown stones. Kappa, even though that's like the rate of a Pen Black Star when enhancing it due to the low crown stone cost, it makes it really easy. I really don't recommend you go and drop like 2.6 bill and uh, 2.8 bill. It's just not worth buying it. I, I'd say just get it at a low level and tap it yourself. It's really easy, guys. Once I got it to Tet, it was already effective. I really didn't need to go to Pen. But every day I do like a few taps of it to Pen with Cronstones and it finally went. So even just getting the Tet variant is really huge. As long as you can get a green offhand and use the ultimate reform stone and you're able to hit the AP cap, then you're going to make gains. Now, I'm sure some of you are looking through the video and just want a straight answer, which is the best offhand to grind with? Well, it depends on your AP and the spot you're grinding with. If you can't hit the AP cap, then use a Kudum. If you can and you barely make it, then a Kudum is fine. But if you can sacrifice a little bit of monster AP, then you can switch to Nether. And if you can hit the monster cap with the green offhand, then that's going to be best because of that 10% special attack damage. So you want to make sure you are right at that AP cap and you're able to sacrifice your AP for other stats in order to make sure you're getting the most out of your gear. Now coming back to consumables and buffs, thanks to this knowledge, there's actually a strong use case for Exquisite Cron Meal again due to the 5% back attack damage and crit hit damage. So if you're hitting the AP cap using a simple Cron Meal, you can definitely make gains by utilizing Exquisite Cron Meal. Now in addition to the sources we spoke about, here are some other sources that you can get additional species damage. On screen, I'll put up the Lightstone set effects that you can use. That is, the Wild Comma Sylvia gives you 30 Comma Sylvia damage. The Wild Demi Humans gives you 30 Demi Human damage. And the Wild Humans gives you 24 additional human damage. Additionally, you can change your main hand to increase your species damage as well. Utilizing the bear's weapons, you can increase your species damage by 25. Utilizing iron weapons, you can increase your demi-human damage by 35. And by using Salath weapons, you can increase your human damage by 35. Now, my apologies if I missed any additional sources of stats, guys. Like, there are so many drafts, food buffs, uh, other sources like villa buffs, church buffs, and furniture buffs, and even crystals, which give you all these substats, which can increase your DPS. But I wanted you to understand how all of this works so you can make that decision for yourself and progress in a more efficient route. Rather than spending hundreds of hours getting that next AP bracket, next AP bracket, you can progress in a much quicker manner by being smart about what you're buying. Like for example, with the green offense and such, you don't need to go pen black star in order to make more money if you're only at orcs. You can get that same AP cap with a tet black star and progress in a different route, which allows you to kill way faster than someone who just goes straight AP. Now in PvP, this all might be different, but at least for PvE, I hope this really helped you guys out and enabled you guys to take your grinding to the next level. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you found it helpful. Hi, I'm the MO Guru. Check me out at twitch.tv slash I'mPansy, where I do stream. And if you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe. It really helps me out. The best way to support me is to share this video with your friends and on Discord. Until next time, take it easy. Peace.